Hey guys, Nick Hewitt here. Um, I'm going to do a quick, well I say quick video, it's going to be two uh, videos on creating a jQuery slideshow. Um, I haven't done some stuff in jQuery for a while and I was actually working on something like this for one of my clients uh, over the past week and I thought it would be a good video to cover. Um, so we're just going to have an image here and the image is going to uh, crossfade between the image that we have now and the one that's next in line or previous in line. Um, so I'll show you, I'll do the code on it after this video. This video is just going to be setting up the graphics and uh, breaking everything apart and slicing it up. Um, so the first thing that we want to do, I'm actually going to leave this over here as a cheat sheet. Um, but I already have my image imported, so you do want to have a base image to use as a placeholder, so that way you can kind of see um, how everything's going to work together. Oops. Switch over to my uh, image that I have here. And the first thing I want to do is create a background layer. So now with my layer selected, I'm going to go and choose a color. Click OK. And then I'll, whoops, control background, or a control backspace will uh, fill in the background with your uh, background color. Alt backspace will do your foreground color. So I have white in my foreground. If I hit Alt backspace, it'll fill in with white. Control backspace uh, background or the yeah the background color so if I right click on my uh, layer with my image I can go to blending options and choose stroke and I'm gonna do this just so that way I can get a border around my image and I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna use something similar a padding around my image I'm gonna place it in a div element and uh, put some padding around the, that div so that way it gives it a nice white border um, it's always a good idea when you're doing graphic design to keep in mind how you can do those things in CSS and just regular HTML because you don't want to be um, doing all this graphic design and then you could e very easily do something similar in CSS and HTML and have all those extra images that need to load in. It just makes it a lot quicker uh, for a loading website to have as little of um, the styling that you need in images as possible. Um, and you want to do as much of it in a, a, uh, HTML and CSS. So I'm going to change the color here and put it to white. So uh, I'm going to change that to a 2. So now if I click OK, we have a nice white border around our image. Uh, the next step, I'm going to do the little drop shadow that we have here. So I'm going to control, oops, control and click on the thumbnail of the image and that just selects everything that is visible on that layer. So it's just going to select that image. So I'm going to create a new layer, switch it to black and white, and alt backspacing. I'm going to put in some a black uh, box here. So with that layer selected, I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and Warp. And this is going to give me options to pull down the corners. I just want to pull it down just a little bit. So now that I have my box here, I want to make it even so I drag out a guideline. Whoops, I don't have guides on. So, you just click up here in your ruler, you can do control R for your rulers, and you can drag one out, and then that makes it easier when you are pulling out your lines, and it gives you uniform uh, curves. So now if I stick this layer behind, whoops, I gotta enter out of my transform, if I put that behind my box, get rid of my guides, control semicolon or colon, um, that'll get rid of that, you'll see we have a nice little uh, drop down or drop shadow. I'm just going to bump that up a little bit. Oops, too much. There we go. And the last thing I want to do to this is add a blur. So I'm going to do filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I just have mine set to four pixels. I'm going to click OK. So that gives us a nice little, uh, nice little drop shadow, almost like the edges are, are lifting up a little bit. You see this a lot on like Apple and uh, those kind of cool looking websites. I don't really enjoy the drop shadow effect that it has up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a layer mask to this shadow. I'm just going to hit G to select my layer mask and from the top pulling down with black in my foreground I'm going to do a layer mask on that. So that gets rid of my little shadow that I had at the top. The next step is creating our little uh, buttons over here and it, it's actually two pieces. You have one button just like this 
and then you duplicate it and uh, make it a little bit larger and then you change the color and add some gradients to it to give it the cool effect that we have here. So I'm going to do that right now and it's actually really simple. You just go over here and select the polygon tool make sure you have side set to 3 and then pull out holding shift because if you hold shift then it can, uh, confines it to certain degrees otherwise you have a, a free rotating uh, triangle. So now we just pull that a little bit and with that layer I'm just going to bump it down a little bit. Um, what you want to do is grab your direct selection tool. Grab your anchor points that make up these two corners and then you want to do a free transform. You can do edit free transform points or you can just hit control T and that'll give you the same option. Holding down shift and alt will stretch both at the same time so it uniformly scales uh, those two points and we just want to stretch it out a little bit that looks good and then hit enter because we only have those two points selected we want to select all three now because we want to scale the whole thing so again do with all three points selected do control T for, uh, for free transform and holding down shift alt we want to scale this down and that looks good all right, that looks about right. Okay, and now we want to apply a layer mask to this, and we'll grab our gradient tool, do black, whoops, black to white, and that'll give us a little gradient there, just like we had on the other image. And now we want to stick this arrow behind the photo of the car. Otherwise, if you pay attention, whoops, if I come off this layer, you'll see. I'll really have to zoom in but you'll see the the arrow come over the white here and that's not what we want you can actually see it in the image of the car down here so if I slide that behind it then that solves that problem so now I'm going to duplicate this arrow and flip it to create the one on the other side so I'm just going to zoom out again to where I was before and do edit transform path with the arrow that I just created and do flip horizontal and you'll notice that the gradient doesn't uh, doesn't flip with it so we'll have to recreate the, the gradient mask for this layer but we can move it just grab the uh, move tool and then just slide it over to where you want to position it on this side and right about there looks good so now we select our mask layer again and we want to fill it with white so alt back or yeah alt backspace no control backspace sorry um, we'll fill it with white so that way we don't have any mask uh, going on right now but we want to apply a new one so select our gradient tool and with black going to white just drag out our gradient so now we have both of our arrows set up on either side of the image but we want to add that blue arrow like we did before uh, like we had in the other image so now we do duplicate this layer click OK and we want to free transform the whole thing and scale it up so shift alt to scale uniformly and then we'll just leave it like that keep the layer the, the layer mask that we have from uh, from when we duplicated and create a new layer on top of that on this new layer we want to fill it with a nice blue color so we'll do something like this color click OK and we just want to fill this layer with our foreground color and it doesn't look right right now because I filled the whole layer with that color and what's gonna happen is I'm actually gonna set the arrow that we just created as the layer mask so if I hold down alt and click in between these two it actually sets this layer to become the layer mask for the layer above it and it makes sense um, the way that it's laid out and it doesn't look right right now because the black arrow is under it so now if I oops, click OK there it's starting, to, it's starting to come together so now with this blue layer selected I want to change the blend mode and you can do a lot with blend modes it actually adds quite a bit to any design that you that you can put together but I'm going to choose screen 
Oops, maybe not screen. I'm going to do overlay. Oh, I'm going to find a good one. Hmm. I'll just leave it at screen. Actually, I changed my mind. What I'm going to do with this layer here is I'm going to do a black to white gradient. And that'll get and then set this layer to blue. So I'm just applying the blue color to this layer. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit darker. There we go. And then setting this color uh, to a gradient black to white. And then I'm going to apply my screen mask or my screen blend option. No, sorry, overlay uh, to this layer. And it doesn't quite look the same, but it'll work. So um, that's basically it. I'm going to slice this up and um, I think I might do that in the next set of videos because uh, it's already getting to be 11 minutes in this video. So um, next video is going to slice it up and then I'm going to get into doing some code for it. Um, so make sure that you pay attention to the next video and if you guys want to subscribe I'd be grateful. Um, but I will uh, see you in the next video.